Good evening and welcome to the Pracht International's expat webinar, Understanding the Dutch Housing Market. I'm Bram Donkers and I'm your moderator for the next hour. If you're joining us, you might be thinking about buying a house in the Netherlands or uh, already started searching for one. Uh, either way, we are happy to have you here with us tonight. Uh, we are really proud that the International Welcome Center um, Utrecht region asked us to broadcast this webinar. And we also welcome our viewers that are here through the NVM. Tonight um, we will have a chance to learn about the Dutch housing market from some uh, unique perspectives. Our main guest is an experienced buyer's estate agent and we have real stories from real people. Our main guest here in the studio, a real estate specialist Gerda Wiegers, she wants to help you in uh, understanding the Dutch housing market and uh, creating your own home buying journey, uh, if it's possible stress-free. And for those who uh, might have uh, questions, you can ask your questions here uh, in the system of the webinar or uh, afterwards you can contact Gerda directly. Uh, we will provide the contact information later in the webinar. So, we will uh, uh, start this uh, webinar that uh, uh, starts with a brief overview of what you can expect this hour, uh, some inside information on uh, the uh, international uh, situation. We bring uh, three personal stories and we will um, inform you about the actual housing trends. We will give you information about the various steps you have to take when you want to buy a house in the heart of Holland. And at the end, as I said, you can ask your own questions to Gerda and she will do her best to answer it. Um, so use the chat feature here in this webinar and uh, let me introduce um, our main speaker and sponsor for this evening, Gerda Wiegers. She is a NVM real estate agent and an MVA certified expat broker with uh, 15 years of experience in the Dutch housing market. She's founder of Pracht Internationals. You may have to pronounce have to practice on Pracht um, and she helped many Dutch and international clients to find their dream home here in the most beautiful country in the world. Uh, we're talking about the greater Utrecht region uh, tonight. Gerda, why the Utrecht region? Thank you Bram for introducing me. Um, uh, at first I would like to say that it's for me also exciting this evening because it's my first time to do a live webinar. So, um, yeah, and I hope to provide uh, the, uh, the people who join our webinar with useful information in their process to buy a house. Um, and regarding to your question, I was born in Utrecht, so uh, my life started here. So, uh, yeah, for me, it's my, my home basis. Um, uh, I have lived the last 20 years uh, near Utrecht with my family. So I'm very uh, yeah, used and acquainted with this area in Holland. Utrecht is the fourth city in, yeah. in the Netherlands. Um, it has some uh, specific uh, plus points. Yeah, I think uh, living in this area is, is great because uh, we are in the center of Holland. So when you want to, to go uh, to other parts of Holland, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good starting point. Um, it's a really green area with lots of woods, uh, parks, green parks, but also a lot of culture with old cities, with old city centers like Utrecht and Amersfoort. Um, and on the other hand, it's also you have good transportation. Uh, we have the a central railway station in Utrecht. Uh, it's really great. And going to Schiphol Airport is also easy from here. So it's really the heart of Holland and we're yeah. broadcasting live and direct here yeah. from uh, uh, Media City Hilversum. Yeah. Um, about you, um, you have specific experience as a, a real estate agent? Yeah, I started my career not in the real estate business, but uh, I started uh, in the financial sector, uh, in the mortgage uh, uh, and more, specific, uh, more specifically. So uh, for 10 years I, uh, I sat in that part of the housing uh, business and after that I switched to the estate agent side um, and I, uh, I have, been, have 
experience now for 15 years as an estate agent. And after five years of that, I started, I founded my own company, Pracht Aankoopmakelaars. And it's specifically for buyers in the housing market. So you specialized with a separate uh, company uh, on only the buyer. Yeah. So you're not selling. No, I don't sell houses. So I'm only specialized in helping people to buy their own house. And uh, I help them also in the search process to that house for that house. So I do that for 10 years now. Uh, and I started for Dutch clients uh, in the Utrecht region. And uh, yeah, during all those years, I also uh, guided more and more international clients with their search process. So that finally resulted in uh, my new company, Pracht Internationals, uh, which I founded a few months ago. So Pracht Internationals is focusing on the specific needs of uh, expats coming to the Netherlands yeah. and wanting to buy a house yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Um, you specialize on the Utrecht region. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting market. Yeah, it's really an interesting market and it's becoming more and more popular for internationals to live here because what we see is uh, it's, it used to be that internationals or expats uh, uh, settled in Amsterdam or Amstelveen, Amstelveen in Dutch uh, or in The Hague. Uh, that were the main cities where expats or internationals uh, uh, stayed. But nowadays with the overheated market, especially in Amsterdam, more and more internationals search for a house in the bigger area around Amsterdam. So Utrecht region is really interesting uh, then. So Utrecht as the, the fourth city of this country yeah. uh, is, is a great place uh, to work. Yeah. And you can also find good uh, homes in, in the direct uh, environment of Utrecht. Yeah, yeah, you can find a variety of houses or apartments. Uh, you can choose to live in the city center, so more in the old town, or also in the old town of Amersfoort. Uh, but you also can uh, choose to live more in the outskirts and have a newer built house house with a garden and or in het gooi where you have also beautiful houses so there's a lot of difference uh, and it also depends on uh, on uh, on for example the schools if you want your children to go to a dutch school or to an international school that also uh, yeah uh, makes a difference in choosing where you want to live so we have everything here in yeah. the heart of holland we uh, talk about that uh, later uh, but you you explained you were uh, focusing with Pracht Internationals on the international clients. Yep. What's appealing about working for international clients? Uh, what I like most about is that I can help them really through the process of buying a house. Because when you come from abroad and you don't have any clue about the Dutch system of how the house buying process works, what steps you have to take, uh, then yeah, I... It's for me, it's, it's, I, I like it very much to help my clients through that process and see them happy in the end with the house they bought. So that's my goal, to see happy clients. And it's a difficult journey to buy a house here? Um, now, it's not that easy because it's a very overheated market at the moment. So uh, buying a house is not uh, not just simple. I see a house, I like it and I buy it. That's not the way it goes anymore. You have to prepare a lot and you have to be patient, etc. But we'll explain it later on uh, in the webinar, I think. So this webinar is not only about your personal expertise on the matter, but we will hear also the personal stories from various uh, people. Uh, who do you have for us tonight? Um, we, we will show you Christian, who's an Italian client of mine. He recently bought a house in Hilversum. Mm -hmm. So he will tell his story about the way that uh, went. Um, and we have Kat and James. Kat is from Poland and James from the UK and they also bought a house uh, and with my help so they explained how it worked so also interesting I think to hear and uh, we start with Jenna she's from the US she came here with her family uh, her husband and her children um, uh, from, uh, yeah, from the US as I said and she rented the house at first and she will tell you uh, she will tell us in, uh, in the video we show um, about her experience. I know her as a friend, so she's not a client of mine. She came here a few years ago and um, 
Uh, I met her a year ago, so this is her story, I think. Well, yeah. let's uh, hear from Jenna about coming from uh, Seattle, Washington and settling in the heart of Holland. My name is Jenna and four years ago, my family moved here in the Netherlands from Seattle, Washington in the United States. We moved here with two school age children and two dogs. And at first we lived in an apartment About six months after living here, we decided, hey, we want to buy a house. So we looked for a Makalar and picked one at random, and thankfully it worked out pretty well. We were lucky that our Makalar was really competent and she understood the little things that made each house different and each neighborhood different, and she was able to communicate that to us in, a, in an effective way. Um, what became a challenge and affected us later on in the process was that she was not very comfortable speaking in English, which happened to be our native language, and none of us were able to speak Dutch. Another communication challenge that came up for us is that no one ever explained to us step by step every single thing that homeowner homeowners are required to do. Um, when they're buying a house. And we also encountered along the way that all the different people that we had to deal with, they all expected that we knew what to do. And that certainly was not the case. We had no idea what we were doing. And in the end, we almost missed the important detail of securing uh, insurance for our house. Thankfully, we fixed that but it could have been quite challenging. My first tip for international buyers looking for a home in the Netherlands is to find a Maklar that you are comfortable communicating with, whether that's in English or a different language. Make sure that you can easily communicate and understand each other. My second tip is to really think about how you want to live your life, where you want to be living. Do you want to be in a city? Do you want to have more space? And really focus on that. And my third tip is for internationals who have children. It's really important to find a home that is located near your children's school. So have a good idea in your head about what type of school, whether it's a Dutch school or an international school, your children will, will attend. After all that, Even though some parts of our process and our journey to our new home were a little bit challenging, we are super happy with the house that we're in and we've built a really wonderful life here. Came here with two dogs and two school. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Because I put the dogs first. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> The dogs always come first. <laughs> Thank you, Jenna, for uh, sharing our uh, tips or your tips with us. Uh, Jenna came uh, from Seattle and settled uh, here in uh, in Holland. Geda, looking at uh, this video, mm -hmm. uh, what's the main point uh, for you? Now, the main point for me that strikes me the most is that she says uh, everybody expected that we knew what to do. That's one part of it. And on the other hand, we had no idea what we were doing. So um, when you look at that, that means that they had no clue about the process they were going to, yeah. to, to buy that house and what they had to do. So. Um, and, and that's, for me, a signal that it is really important to help people in that process to be their partner in it and to guide them through uh, uh, on that path. Yeah. Um, we... Um We will talk about uh, that later, uh, about well, how does it feel to dive into uh, the process of mm -hmm. buying a house. Um, is it wise to buy anyway, uh, for for instance, uh, when expats are coming to this mm -hmm. country, uh, everybody starts renting? Uh, most of the times, yeah, it's, it's the most uh, common way to start uh, renting a house when internationals come to the Netherlands because it's... Uh, almost impossible to get a mortgage if you are here sh in a shorter than six months. So you have to be here for six months or, or sometimes 12 months to get a mortgage. So 
most international start here uh, renting a house and that's and, flexible and that's flexible so uh, but then they decide uh, some of them decide to stay longer and they uh, yeah really like live the way of living in Holland so they decide to to buy a house because it's all also uh, financially more attractive to buy a house than to stay uh, to rent a house because the interest rates are very low over here mm -hmm. at the moment and uh, that makes it yeah more attractive than buy than renting sorry so uh, basically you're saying when you're renting you're flexible uh, but you're uh, throwing away uh, money yeah and more or when, less. when you're uh, buying you're yeah. building something for your future yeah yeah and you can choose more the house that you really like and that fits in your way of living okay yeah. well um when the decision has been made uh, to buy mm -hmm. on the dutch market um let's zoom into that dutch housing market and yep. its latest uh, trends here because the dutch housing market is booming yeah it is really booming it's uh, that's it uh, for for a period already and we see that it's really overheated uh, for example i have a, a, some facts and figures from the mvm or the dutch realtor association mm -hmm. they published uh, lately the second quarter of this year their latest figures and as you can see uh, in those facts that 52 percent of the houses were sold above the asking price and that's for the general uh, figure for whole the net for the Netherlands as a total so that means that uh, one in two houses are sold for a price that was is higher than they asked for it so buyers are overbidding they are overbidding and that means at the same time that uh, with those houses there are more offers most of the times more mm -hmm. people who want to buy that house mm -hmm. and uh, prices of houses are rising yeah the prices have risen uh, the last year uh, for nine uh, percent in the netherlands so that's also uh, yeah a big uh, yeah way up mm -hmm. yeah so you say buy now because the price will be higher later no, that's not what I say. Uh, I, th I think that people uh, want to buy the house. I have had that question always eh? during the te past 10 years. Every, almost every client asked me, is this the right moment to buy a house? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there's always a right moment to buy a house, I think. But you have to be prepared and have to know uh, yeah, uh, what the value of the, the house is at that moment. So... Um, I think there's always a good moment to buy a house. But you have to remember the, the market at this moment is tighter yep. than ever. Yep. And it's uh, COVID times now, yep. 2020. Yep. That doesn't make it better. Uh, we don't see any effect on the housing market uh, uh, because of COVID. So um, during the last month, uh, the housing market is still going strong. Uh, I would say it's even getting better. More houses are sold. Um, that's not good news for the buyers. That's not good news for the buyers, but it indicates that there is still a lot of demand in the market and a shortage of houses. So uh, and I don't think that will change uh, rapidly. Yeah. You gave us some uh, figures and trends uh, for yep. the general Dutch uh, uh, overview. Uh, how's the situation in the Utrecht region? In the Utrecht region, when I, s when I look at the city of Utrecht, then the situation is even m uh, worse, worse, because uh, there uh, almost 70% of the houses are sold above the asking price. And also here prices went up with 7% the last uh, year. So, uh, And also houses were, are sold within a uh, a short period 23 days for is it the average and that means from the moment the house is on funda and it's un unconditionally sold so also that there's no uh, uh, possibility meet more to dissolve the contract on based on the mortgage a period of 23 days is really quick and it's mm. never been so short as as nowadays so it's about moving fast yeah because from the moment a house uh, comes on the market yeah. till uh, the uh, the sale is finally com concluded yeah it's only 23 days yeah it's really fast yeah Okay, well, good to know that. Uh, and um, the corona uh, does not have an impact uh, uh, on that situation. 
No, not really. We don't see any effects on the, on the housing uh, figures uh, at the moment. And the shortage is still there and the interest rates are still low. So. Okay. Internationals who are looking to buy a home right now should uh, know that the biggest chilling, uh, challenge that they face is the, the shortage. Yep. Um, the, the market is under pressure. Yep. And uh, um, you say um, stick to your dream. What yeah. do you mean by that? Yeah, yeah I really mean. I really. Uh, uh, that's my. Um, yeah, my. Uh, how do you say it? Uh, Stick to your dream is really what I intend to, to, to say to my clients because uh, my experience is that holding on to that dream, uh, you always succeed to find the house that fits with your situation. So uh, be patient and prepare yourself very good in this market. That's my advice. And finally, you find the house that really where you're really happy, okay. you're happy with. So it's about preparation, yeah. it's about being patient. Yeah. Uh, and I heard uh, Jenna uh, tell us, uh, look for a good makelaar. What's that? Yeah, a makelaar, that's a real estate agent. And when you have a makelaar that's on your side as a buyer, it's called an aankoopmakelaar in Dutch. So it's a different type of makelaar than the makelaar who's on the side of the seller. Uh, the makelaar you see in the house who do the visits and do the, show, the viewings of the house, that's the makelaar of the seller. So he's paid or she is paid by the owner of the house mm -hmm. and you as a buyer... You can have your own makelaar. That's called the aankoopmakelaar. Yeah, and you as an aankoopmakelaar yeah. uh, prepare uh, the whole process with uh, your client. Yeah. How does that process start? Now, uh, the process starts with a, uh, yeah, a conversation. And, uh, uh, yeah. and then we investigate all the wishes of, my, of our clients. So we start uh, with a, a, yeah, a long conversation to hear what they really like, how they would like to live, where the school of the children is, if there are if there are children, uh, how they would like to go to the school with a bike or by car, where their work is, how, yeah, do they like to cook, is it important to have a big kitchen, um, all so kinds of things. You do a very big interview, yeah. you take your time for yeah, that, yeah, some we, kind of questionnaire? Yeah, we, we use a questionnaire, so uh, we, we, we all the items uh, yeah, are discussed, and uh, so I have a clear view, a clear, yeah, clear view of what they are looking for. Yeah. And then it's my job to find the houses uh, that fit with all those wishes. So you paint a picture of that dream house together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want a garden or not? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are the distances? Yeah. And yeah. then you go look for suitable solutions. Yeah. Then we visit uh, a few houses together. So I see them also, the, my clients, in the house and see how they react on the house and the typical specifications. And then it becomes more and more clear what they really uh, like and what they really want to have in the house house and uh, that makes it more easier to find the right property for them. So you do real life house viewings yep. and you go with them? Yeah, we go together so there's a seller's agent in the house who shows us around but I'm there with my clients to guide them and to inform them about what we see. I prepare the documents so I prepare all the information of the house, I read it so I know um, very well when I visit the house where I have to be aware of. Okay, but in times of uh, Corona, COVID, yeah. uh, things must be different than normally? No, there is a difference because, of course, we keep the one and a half meter distance and we don't shake hands, etc. Um, you and need to wear a mask? Now, if you like to, it's not uh, it's not needed. But if people like, it's possible, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but it used to be uh, a lot of times a situation that the seller's agent uh, organizes a kind of open house that during a certain time slot, uh, lots of people could visit the house. So you walk there with more uh, people in the house. And it will, can be very crowded then. That could be very crowded. But nowadays that's not possible anymore because no. of COVID. So uh, the seller's agent, uh, they use a strict time schedule. So uh, yeah, you have to be there on time as well to use the time you have uh, to, to look around. 
and uh, so that's the difference. So um, you do one or two house viewings, uh, and then they know what they want, or is it? Uh, no, then it's more and more clear. So uh, uh, if we are very lucky, one of those houses is really uh, their dream house, and we can make an offer. Uh, but most of the time, uh, times it takes more uh, more viewings to see more properties, and uh, uh, yeah, I think seven or eight is quite normal to see. Uh, maybe if you are lucky within three four viewings you find the right property yeah. and those house viewings are uh, always uh, when you go there physically mm -hmm. or uh, do they organize it uh, online um, now that that's that is a possibility uh, sometimes my clients are abroad so that's also a possibility oh, yeah. and then I go to the viewing and make video uh, and, and send it to them and we discuss what if they like it or not, or what I what I saw, and give them my advice about the house. Yeah. You just told told us uh, you might need ten uh, house viewings, maybe maybe, maybe twelve, yeah. and then you choose one, yeah. and then you don't get it. That's possible, and maybe we 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 are earlier in the process to make an offer. I think ten, twelve is is a long period, mm -hmm. a big amount. But uh, then we make an offer, and uh, but but you have to be prepared that we are not the only one to make an offer. That's the situation uh, yeah. in the current uh, yeah. market. And, and uh, seemingly you have to overbid. To, to get it or um, what's your yeah, strategy that's my uh, that's my advice i give to my client because I, I i have insight in all the information and the sold properties in the neighborhood so i can make a good comparison uh, comparison to uh, uh, yeah and giving a good advice about the value of the property and sometimes i advise not to to overbid because i don't think it's worse and sometimes i do or something i say this is the value and if you want to yeah to overbid it is possible but be aware of the risks of that as well. Okay, so you're creating the strategy together with yeah. your clients. Yeah. They make the decision, they make of the, course. Yeah. the bid. It's their money. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. Uh, and then when you finally uh, get it, how yeah. long does it take uh, till the moment that you get the keys for um, you, to your new house? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, because when we have signed the purchase agreement, that's the moment that you really are, are the buyer of the house. Then after that, most people need to arrange a mortgage and that takes about six weeks from then so that period you need uh, 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 yeah, either way um, and then to the date of trans transfer at the notary most of the times it's about three months from the date of signing the purchase agreement more or less sometimes it can be quicker Sometimes it's a little bit longer, but depending on the average pressure, time, yeah. yeah, on the situation, yeah, and also yeah. depends on what the plans are of the seller of the house. They mm -hmm. have to move, so um, and in total, looking back from start to when you start searching a house, and that period can be, yeah, if you are quick within two months, but it also mm -hmm. can take four or five months, and then the three months period. So you have to take time to find the right property yeah. so also yeah. but you can do that in in the the first period that you're here fresh in the, in the country starting your job it's here uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can use that yeah. time yeah um, when uh, do, do they need to start thinking about buying and what kind of house what's the ideal um, situation now, as I told you before the the possibility to get a mortgage is only after six months that you here in Holland yeah. in the Netherlands so, so before that you simply cannot get a mortgage now it's almost impossible yeah you can buy a house if you have your own money if you have savings then it's possible but mm -hmm. otherwise you have to have a mortgage and you have to wait for that but you can use that time to investigate what you really like um, and also to uh, get a good advice of a good mortgage advisor so you can prepare also that upfront mm -hmm. so we're investigating uh, uh, the important steps in this yeah. uh, process um, 
you say, well, um, uh, create the dream house mm -hmm. for yourself and, and uh, think together what you what you really want. Yep. That's, yeah, that's the main step at, at uh, yeah, the start of the process. I think it's also my role to help people to, in that process, also to think about what they really like. And I'm a kind of critical factor in that process. Mm -hmm. You uh, help them think. Yeah, I help them think. Maybe you can explain it that way. But discussing these things with, with each other makes it more clear what they really uh, want to have. And uh, it's an important uh, starting point. So it helps the process when they know exactly what they're looking for. Of course, yeah. Okay, well, um, it, it can be a, a stressful uh, process, uh, um, I guess. Um, what are your top tips for getting prepared to buy a home? Now, I think uh, it's really important. Uh, that's also one of the first, thing I, first things I mentioned to my clients is to uh, get a good advice of a mortgage advisor. So you really know how high a mortgage can be. And also you can think about how m many Huh, how much more uh, money you would like to borrow. Um, so but, but you told us before you started your career in that industry, yeah. but that's not your role in this process? No, no, that's not my role. I'm the real estate agent and that is a specific uh, job, a specific, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, job, I would say. Uh -huh. And on the other hand, you have the mortgage advisor. It's really a specialist, specialized work. Also uh, includes tax, tax issues, etc. So uh, that's really a separate, uh, separate uh, job. So next to your aankoopmakelaar, you need a hypotheekadviseur. Yes, you really need a hypotheekadviseur. And uh, where do we get uh, such I a person? I work together with a few uh, hypotheekadviseurs that are really used to helping also international clients. So uh, it's also important that you find a mortgage advisor that also also, uh, yeah, can can explain it in English to you. Have the documents in English to explain uh, uh, certain things to you. So, yeah, we have our network for that. So, talking to the hypotheque adviseur yeah. is is another uh, step. Uh, it's quite quite difficult. You need a, a lot of information. Mm -hmm. um, is is it important that that the buyer? understands all these steps or can they just yeah, when you think throw it at you? Yeah, wait, now throw it with me. <laughs> yeah, uh, My role is to, to help them in, in, during that whole process, be their partner in that process. And as you heard from Jenna before in the video, she also told that she wasn't aware of all those steps. So mm -hmm. I see my role as a real estate agent starting with that. Uh, uh, inform them about the steps and help them to find the right people to assist them during those steps. Yeah. Okay, Jenna told us, uh, find the right makelaar. Yeah. Uh, we go to another uh, personal story, an example. Um, you uh, f found Christian, mm -hmm. who, he, who, who he is, you can explain later, yeah. but uh, let's uh, make uh, acquaintance to Christian. I found Eva a very good consultant because she was able to match a very high level of professionalism with a friendly way to make the work in order to achieve the objective that had been shared with her at the beginning of the assignments. I was working here in Netherlands for a few months when we uh, as a family decided to move uh, in the country and the first decision that uh, my wife and uh, myself with the kids had to make was uh, the, to select the area where to move and uh, our main criteria was uh, uh, to identify an area where our kids could uh, attend a very good uh, international schools. So at the end we selected uh, Hilversum as an area where we could uh, um, look for a house and uh, then uh, the next uh, need that we had was uh, to identify a good consultant that uh, could help us uh, to identify and buy uh, a house. So that's uh, Christian, um, one of your clients, Gerda. Uh, how did you meet him? 
Uh, we met because I, he was introduced to me uh, by a relocator I know. So um, she asked me to guide him in the process of buying a house in the Utrecht region. He got a job here? Yeah, he worked in uh, he works in Utrecht in a science park on the university. Uh, uh, he, nah, anyway. Uh, he works in Utrecht. And um, um, yeah, he wanted to buy a house. He stayed here already on his own and rented an apartment in Utrecht. And um, yeah, he would like to, to get his family over here and they to start their life over here in the Netherlands. And then you uh, helped him with all your steps and yeah. he finally bought a house yeah. here in Hilversum? Yeah. yeah, and it was a really quick process. Uh, It was a strange process as well, because when I first met Christian, we did an online uh, uh, meeting. This was And quite recently? Yeah, it was quite recently, but it was before the COVID time. But mm -hmm. it was easier than to, to do the first meeting online. And after those that first meeting, we got the lockdown. So... Um, uh, Christian left Holland and went to his family in Italy and stayed there uh, until the end of May. So he and had to buy on distance? Yeah, because he wanted to move during the summertime because his children had to go to school after the summer. And uh, I did the viewings for him uh, during that period. So okay. Well, it's an intriguing story. Let's hear more from Christian himself. I think her added value um, came from the fact that she is a very expert of the Dutch market, so she uh, explained remotely, because in those days I was locked down in Italy, um, using FaceTime and other virtual uh, um, meetings tool, uh, we met online and she explained to me and to my wife uh, what is the procedure to buy house in uh, Netherlands. Uh, she explained step by step what is needed, uh, what type of consultant uh, we had to engage. Uh, she helped us uh, also to select those consultants to make the evaluation of the house, uh, to find the right way to get the mortgage uh, and so on. And also uh, she was very helpful because uh, she knows very well the house market in the area in Netherlands in general but in particular in this uh, Utrecht and Hilversum area so she really helped us uh, to um, select to screening uh, the houses uh, remotely I was uh, sitting in Italy she was making the visit to the house here so when we came here uh, in June after a few months that uh, Uh, we were working the, together, she already pre-selected, she, she already pre-screened all the houses that could match somehow the uh, criteria that we identified together so that uh, in uh, one week we visited, uh, I think, uh, more than uh, uh, 12, 15 hours, and then uh, uh, we made a decision together the last uh, day of the week to make an offer to buy these house. The most uh, uh, important things are uh, identify the area where you want to live, select the right uh, house hunter consultant and uh, identify a, a good uh, uh, mortgage advisor. Super. We do feel at home, so buona fortuna con uh, la ricerca della vostra nuova casa. Uh, Italianen houden van een uh, goed kopje koffie. Daar moeten we het zo nog even hebben uh, over uh, Gerda. Yeah. Um, dat was uh, Christian, van uh, one of your uh, um, clients. Uh, I see a very happy uh, person. Uh, he bought his dream house. Yeah, he really brought, bought his dream house with his family. He was here for one week at uh, the end of May, the first time that they could leave Italy with his family. So his wife and two children were here for the first time then in the Netherlands. And during During this week, we, we yeah we visited a few houses and uh, yeah m m he bought this house, signed the purchase agreement. We did a technical inspection during that week, so everything was arranged when he left uh, back to Italy, and the children uh, had visited their school. So 
It was really, uh, and it was a very quick process as well. So he's a real showcase uh, for your procedure and all the steps you're taking. And yeah. this time it was quite uh, fast. Yeah. Um, he made a point that it's uh, important uh, to have a partner at your side, yeah. uh, Michael, who uh, knows what it's all uh, all about. Yeah. Um, that, that partnership. How do you feel that? Yeah, I see myself as a partner of my clients, guiding them through the whole process and be yeah be their partner in every step, so that I'm on their side and uh, I'm there for them, uh, whatever question they have or whatever uh, yeah they want to know, uh, I can help them with that or introduce them to someone who can help them furthermore. Yeah, so we saw um, uh, the coffee uh, yeah. he ended his report uh, with. We we will talk about um, cultural differences yeah. because drinking a cup of coffee is uh, one of your main points when you're uh, trying to explain <laughs> to people about Dutch culture. Yeah, no, I, I, recently I had French uh, clients and uh, they moved into their house and I told them maybe it's a good idea to invite your neighbors if it's possible to uh, to have a cup of coffee in your house that's a normal way of introducing yourself or uh, as new neighbors uh, uh, so they're really surprised oh is that the way they do you do it here so yeah. now nah, that's a small example and you you warn them for the cook trommel <laughs> only, only can get one cookie from the oh, trommel well, i didn't say that but and it's a good idea <laughs> and the lid goes uh, back on <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, uh, talking about cultural differences mm -hmm. is, is is the main thing uh, you do. Yeah. Uh, you tell them about the buckfeet stool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, especially in the city, it's, it's really sometimes an issue that... Uh, uh, or an issue, not an issue, but they like it really to have a buckfeet. Mm -hmm. I also know it from Jenna. Uh, she also has a buckfeet, but in the end she doesn't use it anymore for the children, but for the groceries and the dog, etc. But uh, yeah, it's a real example of yeah, feeling free in the Netherlands, ride, driving your bike, uh, yeah, and that's part of the Dutch culture. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. One of the things that strikes me too is um, the importance of uh, patience. Uh, you explain yeah. sometimes you have to move r real fast yeah. uh, but patience is uh, the main message in your concept yeah I think uh, you need to be patient eh? the one, uh, one other point is to be prepared so be prepared for what, what, is go what might happen mm -hmm. uh, be prepared eh, for your personal situation on the mortgage etc uh, but the patience is also important because during the process in the current uh, market, uh, you also have to take into account that you will be disappointed some one or two times maybe uh, before you get the right, uh, before you find really the property you can buy. So be patient and th the solution will be there. So don't rush. No. Think about your decisions. Yeah. And you... Uh, yeah. And you also have uh, an example of mm -hmm. a personal story about this from yeah. Kat and James. Kat and James, yeah. yeah. Who are they? Uh, Kat and James, uh, uh, yeah, she she is from Poland and he's from the UK. They live together all, already and also they rented an, a house and they decided to, to stay uh, in the Netherlands. And they uh, yeah, also had very specific ideas about what they wanted in, in the house and about the location. So, and they had limited time, but maybe you can show us the video and they will explain it to you how it worked for them. So let's listen to the story of Kat and James. A word that best describes our relationship with Kerda uh, was thoughtful. That's what came to mind. She was consistently uh, understanding of what we wanted and what we needed. And, uh, and that's how we ended up with a house that we really, really love. I'm Kat. And I'm James. And we moved to the Netherlands about 18 months ago and decided to settle here for a while. So our main concern when we started out was how did it work over here? It was a new country for us, so we did not know the market specifications. We haven't been aware of the processes. We, we wanted to make sure that we purchased the house with the best deal we could get at the best pace we could get. The process was incredibly simple, um, thanks to Gerda. Um, but without her, I think we would have struggled to uh, get what we wanted and, and what we have now. 
Gerda took some time to understand uh, our typical characteristic that we are, have very limited time to go and see the property. So she, she really worked us through by opening the WhatsApp group so we have uh, access to the quick information, synchronizing our calendar so we want to make sure that we are both available if possible to see the house at the same time. She was giving us an update about there's no market dynamic at the moment, let's wait for a week or two. So the main boxes to tick when we were looking for the house was we wanted uh, to be near the water. That was really important um, to be, be able to see water. And uh, I also ride motorcycles and needed some secure storage. Those were the two main items. And beyond that, it was more about location and uh, an atmosphere around the house. We're extremely happy with the house. It's exactly what we're looking for. And we've got a little more work to do, but it's really beginning to feel like home. Kat and James, they told about uh, coming to the Netherlands and buying a house here. Uh, Gerda, that was also uh, an interesting process, a, a, yeah. a good story? Yeah it, was, yeah, it was really nice working with them together. That's also a kind of partnership because um, yeah, uh, they knew what they wanted, but it was difficult to find. But in the end, it, we succeeded and they found a house that they, have to, they, they really like and the location is good. So um, yeah, I think they're really happy with their house. Yeah. So we're at the um, final part of this uh, expert webinar, understanding the Dutch housing market. Um, we're ready to take your questions. You can post them on uh, the chat function in this uh, webinar environment. So please uh, send your questions uh, to Gerda. Uh, we will take some of the best uh, questions. Uh, Gerda, next week it's Princess Dag in uh, Holland, yeah. Princess Day. Yeah. Uh, that's the beginning of the parliamentary season, but it's also a main uh, political moment yeah. in the in the year, the start of the year. Um, we read something about transfer tax. Uh, will that be in the new government ruling, or what do you know yeah, about it? We don't know for sure because on Prinsjes Dag itself, the new plans of the government are presented. And it also, hasn't leaked yet. Now this is a kind of leak that's in the in the media, so yeah. I don't know for sure. No. And uh, it's it's stated in those uh, comments that maybe the transfer tax for people who start to buy a house would be go down from 2% to 0%. But I don't know for sure if that's really the case. We have to wait until uh, Prinsjes Dag next Tuesday, I think. Next week, yeah. Next week. So, um, um, yeah, let's wait and see what the, what the plans of the government are. But 2% of the whole price? Uh, normally, the transfer tax for a house is two yeah. percent uh, of the yeah, purchase price. So, if you buy a house of five hundred thousand euro, you have to pay ten thousand euro transfer oh, tax to the that's government. That's a considerable yeah. amount of money, and if yeah. it's changing, it could be interesting. It could be interesting, but if it really helps the market, that's the question. So, uh, yeah, I don't know for sure. Yeah. Maybe it's good to zoom in on the on on, on the the amount of money yeah. uh, because uh, mostly people are looking at the, the cost of uh, the house. Yeah. yeah. But um, you have to consider more costs. Yeah, when you buy a house, you have to take into account that uh, on top of that, on top of the purchase price, you have to pay about three to five percent. Um, uh, extra costs and that's including the transfer tax two percent now and then you have to pay the notary you have to pay your financial advisor your mortgage advisor you have to pay your real estate agent your aankoopmakelaar um, all those kind of costs and uh, yeah so that's uh, uh, what you have to take in, into account. Yeah, and when you uh, apply for your mortgage, mm -hmm. you cannot finance all those costs? No, it's not possible to finance all those costs. So you have to have savings as well to pay uh, to pay these costs at least. If you don't yeah. have your own money, you cannot buy a house in the Netherlands? Uh, no, at the moment anymore, yeah. Okay, we have some questions coming in from Mr. Firehill. I'm interested to learn more about the overbidding practice. Mm -hmm. I'm specifically thinking about Hilversum. Is mm -hmm. there a typical percentage uh, on, uh, uh, on how much the asking price is exceeded? Do yeah. you have some basic rules for uh, go 
I don't, that high? No, I don't have basic rules for that. I don't have basic rules for that in any city, I would say. Because always I look at the situation at that moment for that specific house. Uh, also my uh, idea about the house, how uh, uh, easy it is to sell it in the future, for example. And the quality of the house and uh, all that kind of factors mm, yeah, give me an indication about the value and how much I would overbid. So I don't think it's good to have standard rules for that. Okay. No. Um, in that same uh, region, uh, mm-hmm. Kim Ferguson asks, asks, can the asking price be higher than the appraised value? In other words, is it allowed to determine your own asking price? Uh, yeah, you, it is allowed to to uh, to, to yeah uh, make your own asking price, of course, and it's the, the real estate agent of the seller who advises the owner advises the owner of the house for mm-hmm. the selling price, uh, and um, yeah, sometimes they put it a bit higher than than they would like to have for the house. But nowadays, I think most real estate agents try to have a bit of realistic pricing and they uh, yeah they uh, they hope that they get so much people who are interested in the house that that they get more offers and that it's overbid yeah overbidden uh, a question coming in from Patrick uh, yeah. when do you need a valuation report uh, a valuation report in Dutch it's called a taxatie rapport. It's a mm-hmm. good question as well. Um, is needed when you uh, need a mortgage. Uh, for the mortgage, it's not the purchase price that is leading uh, to get the mortgage, but it's the value that's stated in the valuation report. So when you need a mortgage after buying the house and after you sign the purchase agreement, mm-hmm. there will be a valuator, also a real estate agent, that makes the valuation report. He's, he or she is always also going to have a look in the house mm-hmm. and makes his analysis of, based on the situation in the current market based on houses that are sold uh, and that is that's value the market value that is in the valuation report mm-hmm. that is the basis of the uh, mortgage you can okay. get so you need the valuation report to prove the value of the house to the bank that it's really yeah. worth yeah. buying so the valuator uh, does his work independently And this could be the situation that that value is different from the value from the market price you paid in the purchase agreement or you agreed upon. So that also could indicate that you need more savings uh, to buy the house. I have a question from Math. What is Gerda's LinkedIn? Are you in li- on LinkedIn? Yes, I'm on LinkedIn. You can find my on my name, Gerda Wiegers, or the other possibilities. Uh, possibility is that you find uh, us on Pracht Internationals, also on LinkedIn. We have a company page, so you can follow us there. And if you have questions, you can also ask them over there. Of course, yeah. Okay, well, something we talked earlier about, but Joyce are asking. Joyce is asking this question. Besides the purchase price, what other costs do I have to pay? Um, that's a bit what I explained uh, already. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have the purchase price. On top of that, you have the two percent transfer tax, and you have the cost of uh, the notary of the land register of your financial advisor, of the valuation report, uh, of your building inspection, if you have done that. Can you uh, give an estimate? Is is there a certain percentage? Yeah, about 3 to 5 percent on top of the purchase price. Okay, so you have to get that money from somewhere else because the bank is not going to pay it for you. Clear. Yeah. Okay, um, there's a question from Prakriti, is there an ex- approximate percentage that we have to pay up front to the bank as a down payment? Um, after signing the purchase agreement, it's standard that you pay have to pay or, uh, or 10% of the purchase price within a few weeks after signing the agreement. Mm. Uh, but you also can use a bank guarantee, so you don't need that money as savings 
uh, but you can ask for a bank guarantee and most of the times it's part of the financial advice of your mortgage advisor so that bank guarantee is enough to uh, uh, to fulfill your uh, obligations out of the purchase agreement okay and maybe strange in in some cultures but the bank needs to uh, see what your salary is and how your contract with your employer uh, is what yeah. do you need to prove uh, that's that's the role of the mortgage advisor to uh, investigate all those documents and most yeah. of the time you need an income statement uh, you need to inform them maybe about your savings or about your pension situation so they will have will will have a complete overview of your for your financial position okay. of you and your partner people coming into the country may not be have a fixed job but maybe just a temporary mm -hmm. uh, job is that a problem and then the situation is a bit dip more difficult because uh, most of the mortgage suppliers want yeah they prefer that you have a fixed uh, uh, income and a fixed job fixed contract mm -hmm. um, but nowadays there are more and more possibilities for people who, ha who don't have those fixed contracts so that's really uh, a situation you have to discuss with your mortgage advisor okay and in holland uh, most of the people uh, get their mortgage on two incomes huh? the twee, twee verdieners. do you yeah. need to have two incomes to buy a house anyway uh, or could one income be enough yeah i can't say that in general but yeah if you count two un incomes it's you have more possibilities but I don't know if it's always uh, your choice to do it. Mm -hmm. That's also a question. So, um, uh, of course, there are possibilities to, to take that second income into account, sometimes not for 100%. So, also, that differs, and you need advice of your mortgage advisor. Okay, interesting question coming in from Raoul. Uh, we have a few minutes left, so mm -hmm. if you want to uh, ask your questions to Gerda, please hurry. Uh, Raoul asks, is it a common practice to sell apartments with furniture in Holland or uh, is it completely empty? Uh, normally, it uh, doesn't matter if it's an apartment or a house, uh, uh, houses or apartments are sold empty, so without the furniture. It's uh, a rare situation, it's not common to leave the furniture behind, so uh, what stays behind is the kitchen. That's normal in Holland. Yeah. Um, the bathroom, of course, but the kitchen. Some countries, they remove the kitchen, but it's not the case in Holland. Yeah, in including the appliances yeah, and the stove? I don't know for sure, but uh, mm -hmm. in Holland that all stays behind, except mm -hmm. for uh, goods that are uh, not uh, attached to the floor, I would say. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and you have to buy your own buckfeets. Yeah, of course, yeah. And sometimes maybe I can add that to this question. There is a list of items attached to the selling documentation of a house, and there you can find the goods that are uh, uh, that could be left behind by the seller. So in some cases, some goods could leave stay behind, but. Okay, well everyone, we are about uh, out of time now. Um, I want to thank everyone who participated in this uh, first webinar of uh, Pracht Internationals. Um, on behalf of the International Welcome Center Utrecht Region uh, 2, we would like to thank them for giving us the opportunity to create this webinar. Uh, also thanks to Christian, Jenna, Kat and James for their compelling stories. Um, Gerda, you uh, wanted to close this webinar with some uh, specific tips? Now, uh, also from my side, I would like to thank everybody joining this webinar. It was very nice that, uh, that we could do this. And I would say I have some top tips in the end for, uh, for uh, everyone who is uh, preparing to buy a house. Uh, so the first thing is prepare yourself. Eh? We discussed this uh, several times during this webinar. The other, the second point is uh, find your own makelaar, find your own aankoopmakelaar. I would say and maybe you can look at the MVA certified expert brokers that are specialized brokers uh, specialized in guiding international clients through the home buying process and last but not least be patient and stay positive 
Okay, thank you, Gerda. This webinar uh, is being recorded, so you can find it soon on uh, in the YouTube channel and the other social media accounts of uh, Pracht International. Um, and if you uh, didn't uh, get an answer to your personal question, you can reach out to Gerda on the contact information we are providing. Thank you very much. Dank jullie wel. And have a good night, everyone. <laughs>